Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, uh, somebody brought to my attention that I have missed one particular lecture about uh, problems, uh, trigonometric problems. So I'm returning basically to um, the mass for teens, uh, mass for course right now to solve these uh, trigonometric problems. Um, now, before you uh, watch this lecture, I suggest you to look at these problems just yourself and try to solve them. It's definitely um, the, uh, the most intended actually purpose <coughs> of this course is to basically develop your mind and tune it towards solving certain unknown to you previously problems. So it doesn't really matter what kind of problems I'm solving right now. What is important is for you to solve them because that would prepare you for any kind of unknown in your real practical life, not related to mathematics or physics or anything like that. Because the problems which I will present right now have absolutely nothing to do with your future. You will definitely not be, uh, you will not be uh, in, in a position of solving these problems, exactly these problems. But you will have a lot of new problems which you will have to basically solve by, by yourself and uh, solving these mathematical problems basically like prepares you for this particular task. Okay, so I have uh, six trigonometric problems. I'll, I'll just go one by one. Um, and in some cases, um, I might actually miss certain calculations because they will be trivial, but I will try to go through all of them. Okay. The number one is, I have to prove that 2 times sine to the 6 of angle plus cosine to the 6 of this angle plus 1 equals to 3 times sine to the 4th plus cosine to the 4th. Okay, now this is a trivial exercise in basically algebraic manipulation. The only thing which you have to really know is, you see there are sines and cosines here. It would be nice, it would be all dependent on one particular function, for example, sine. For this purpose we will do a very simple thing. We know that sine square plus cosine square is equal to 1 um, for any angle phi. So I'll just express cosine in terms of sine and substitute it there and check if I will have the same thing on the left and on the right. Because angle phi can be easy, it can, can be any, any angle, right? So, um, so cosine square equals to 1 minus sine square cosine to the force of angle phi is equal to square of this which is 1 minus 2 sine square plus sine to the force of phi and 6 cosine 6 is multiplication this by this square by force degree right which is, okay, let's multiply this by this. It would be 1 minus 2 sine square 5 plus sine 4 phi minus sine square 5 minus sine square multiplied by 1. Multiplied by this would be plus, minus and minus would be plus 2 sine to the fourth phi and minus sine to the sixth phi. So this is cosine to the fourth, which is this, cosine to the sixth, which is this. If you will substitute this into this and this, well, obviously you can uh, make it a little bit easier. It's one minus sine uh, square would be minus three sine square. Uh, sine four would be also plus three sine four. 
and minus sine to the 6. And if you will substitute this into this, and I'm not going to do it, <laughs> so if you will do it, now I did it on the paper actually, you will have exactly the same on the left and on the right, basically. So all you need to know is basically the approach in this particular case. The approach is to basically unify, so everything is um, expressed in terms of sine, let's say, or, or cosine, doesn't really matter, you will have exactly the same result. So this is how this particular problem, and maybe some other, which is equivalent or looks like analogous, whatever, um, this is an approach. Just unify these particular equations, bring them into some common denominator, if you wish. Not in particular sense of uh, arithmetic common denominator, but in this case, sine seems to be like a natural base for everything, or cosine, whatever, but not both of them. That's what's important. What's, what's kind of, you know, difficult in this particular case is because you have two different functions, sine and cosine. If you have one function, everything would be fine. Okay, that's problem number one. Problem number two is very, very analogous. I have to prove that sine to the 8 minus cosine to the 8 equals um, 4 sine to the 6 minus 6 sine to the 4th plus 4 sine square minus 1. Okay. It's exactly the same case, because right now you have more sines than one particular cosine, so you have to do exactly the same thing. You have to do the cosine square is equal to y minus sine square. You have to have cosine to the fourth, which is equal to min minus 2 sine square plus sine to the fourth. And you have cosine to the eighth of phi, which is square of cosine four, so square of this, which means this multiplied by itself. Okay, multiply by itself. Let's multiply it by this. It would be y minus two sine square phi minus sine to the four phi. Multiply by this would be minus two sine square phi plus four sine to the fourth minus 2 sine to the 6 and then multiply by this sine to the 4th by 1 times this minus 2 sine to the 6 plus sine to the 8th so that's my cosine to the 8 so if I multiply, if I subtract, if I do this with a minus sign, so all signs will be with a minus, add sine square, uh, a sign to the eighths, sine to the eighths will disappear. And then uh, basically, well, let's maybe simplify it. So we have sine to the eighth. Now sine to the 6 minus 2 and minus 2, so it's minus 4 sine to the 6. Uh, sine 4, one, another, another, 6, so it's plus 6 sine to the 4th. Second would be minus 4, minus 4 sine to the 2nd degree and plus one, right? Plus one. Okay. Now with a minus sign, you will have minus plus, minus plus, plus minus. Then you will add sine, uh, sine to the eighth. This will disappear. That will be four sine with a plus, okay? Minus sine to the fourth, plus sine and minus one. Yes, exactly, right? So that's the second problem. And approach is exactly the same. 
you unify um, both sides to have only one particular function, sine, instead of two, sine and cosine. So these are trivial problems and they require only accurate manipulation as soon as, soon as you have decided what is the approach, and the approach is to express cosine as a sine. After that, it's just trivial uh, manipulation with numbers. Number three, okay. <coughs> so you have a unit circle. Now, let's take the angles which are multiple of 30 degrees, which is this one, this one, this one, this, 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 and this. And they have to find sum of sine square of these angles phi, and angle phi is actually k times 30 degree, where k is from 0 to everything, so how many of them? 12, right? Uh, 360 divided by 30, so it's 12 points. So from 0 to 11. That's what basically needs to be calculated. <coughs> now, let's just consider only the first quadrant. And we will take this one, this one, and this one. These three. So it's 0, 30 degrees, and 60 degrees. Now, why? Well, uh, because then the next one would be very similar. Actually, I think I should better include this one as well, because this is zero anyway. Sine of uh, zero and sine of 180 is zero. So these uh, are not contributing to the sum at all. So let's just take these three. Um, and, uh, and then corresponding with this, 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 and this. Okay, so let's talk about these first three. Sine of 30 is one half. Square, we have one quarter, right? Plus 60 is square root of three over two. Plus this is one. So what do we have now? We have one quarter, three quarters, and two. So that's two. So these are two. Okay. Now, these are also two. Why? Because the difference between sine and cosine relative to these angles, like plus 30 minus 30, plus 60 minus 60, the difference um, will be in the sine, but since it's a square, um, uh, sign would be unimportant. So we will have these also equals to 2. So what remains? This and this. Now this is 1 half square and square root of 3 square. So it's 1 and 1. So what do we have? 1, 1, 2 and 2. So it's 6. So that's the sum. So what you have to remember is basically that the sine of 30 degrees uh, is one half, and uh, that's something which you you do have to remember. <laughs> it's easy, and uh, 60 degrees is square root of three over two. I, I just remember it, but obviously you can find it out yourself without any problems because 30 degrees is. Uh, this is 60, and this is 30, right? So this is an um, equilateral triangle, so this is also 60. Um, and this thing, this particular piece, is half of this, right? This is half of the side, this is the whole side. So that's why the sine, which is a um, ratio between this to this, is one half. And if this is 1 and this is 1 half, then by theorem of Pythagorean, it will be square root of 3 over 2. 
that side. So that would be sine of 60. So that's it. That, that's a simple thing. Uh, direct consequence from the Pythagorean theorem. So that's it. That's my problem number three. Okay. Problem number four. Okay, so again, you have unit circle, and we are considering only the first quadrant. We have two uh, uh, points, point A and point B. Now, A has coordinates xA, yA. Point B has opposite coordinates, yA, xA. Okay, what needs to be proven is that their sum, sum of this angle and this angle, is equal to 90 degree. Okay, so what we will do is we will drop these perpendicular, and what I'm basically stating right now that these triangles are congruent. Question is why? Well, very simply. What is XA is this, and YA is this. Now, I'm saying that coordinate of B is YA, XA. Now, this is YA, and this is XA. So, as you see, these triangles are absolutely have absolutely the same sides, xa, xa, ya, ya, and hypotenuses are equal to 1. This is a unit circle. So if these are congruent triangles, then the angles which are opposite to equal sides are equal. So let's take, let's say, the, this side and this angle. In the, in the triangle OA, let's put it M, N. So in the triangle um, OA, M, this angle, A, O, M, is opposite to Y. In this triangle, opposite to this equal side is this angle. So whatever this angle is, this angle is. But now O, B, N is the right triangle, and the sum of these two angles is supposed to be equal to 90 degrees. So that's why angle AOM, which is equal to um, OBN, and OBN plus BON equals 90 degrees. That's why that angle plus this angle, angle AOM plus BOM equals 90 degrees. <coughs> That's it. Fifth, um, solve equation, sine x equals to cosine x. OK. Let's do it geometrically. It's kind of easier, at least for me. So this is a unit circle. Now, what is a sine? Sine is the ordinate of, a, of this angle. What is cosine? Cosine is abscissa uh, of this particular angle. <coughs> now, if they are equal, it means that two quantities of these of this triangle are equal to each other. So it's 
triangle, right triangle, with equal catheters, which means this angle is supposed to be 45 degrees, right? So I will change my picture and I put it at, at 45 degrees. P over 4. That's my angle. And in this case, my um, sine and cosine, abscess and ordinate of this angle are equal to each other. Right? Now, where else? I mean, obviously, I have to really do something like this 45 degrees, but actually, the opposite thing would be the same, right? Because in this case, both are negative. This would be cosine, and this would be sine of this angle. This angle is what? It's 180 plus 45. It's 225 degrees. So it's pi over 4 and pi over 4 plus pi plus 180. So this is 45, this is 45 plus 180, which is 225. So these are two angles which basically have this particular property. Um, at the same time, let's not forget that in trigonometry, angles can be greater than 360 degrees. So you can, you know, rotate your um, radius vector more than 360. So basically, these two points um, correspond to a little bit broader number, well, infinite number of solutions. So it's pi over 4 plus pi times k, where k can be any integer number. If it's 0, it's this. If it's 1, it's this. If it's 2, it would be, would be p over 4 plus 2 pi, 2 pi 360 degrees. So we'll have again the same point here, after one full circle. And then again, 180 degrees, pi, and then again and again. So this is a general solution to this equation. Don't forget, this is very important. So it's not really um, sufficient to find all the um, solutions to a trigonometric equation within one full cycle from 0 to 2 pi, from 0 to 360 degree. What is important is to figure out what exactly other angles which are greater or less than. So k is basically any integer can be negative too because we can go backwards uh, uh, counterclockwise is positive uh, clockwise is negative direction of changing the angle so k any an, uh, any integer 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 etc so this is a general solution don't forget this particular piece very important Okay, and one more, similar, but slightly more different. Okay, solve the equation. Tangent x equals cotangent x. Okay, you remember the definition of tangent is sine over cosine, which means we are talking only about angles where cosine not equal to zero. Now cotangent is inverse, cosine divided by sine, or if you wish one over tangent, the same thing, right? Uh, so a sine should not be equal to zero. All right, fine. So we have to really just remember that if for whatever reason we will have a solution something like um, x is equal to let's say pi over 2 90 degrees that's not a good solution because cosine will be equal to 0 and tangent would not basically exist in this case okay so what I will do is the following first of all I will simplify it I will use cotangent 
uh, equals to 1 over tangent. And let's say tangent is z. What do I have? z equals 1 over z. Right? That's my equation now. I will solve it for z. And then, knowing what is z, I will find my x tangents of which is equal to z. So, here, what's the solution to this? Well, obviously I can <coughs> say z not equal to 0. So, solution z is equal to 0 is not good, but it's not a solution anyway. So, we'll, I will multiply by z, both cases, both sides. I will have z squared is equal to 1, right? Which means z is equal to plus or minus 1. So, my tangent So that's my basically simplified equation. Okay, let's solve it. <coughs> Again, I will use geometry. So tangent is sine over cosine. So it's this is sine, this is cosine. So if they are equal to 1, that means they are equal to each other, right? which means it's, again, pi over 4, 4 to 5 degrees. Where else on this unit circle my sine and cosine would be equal to 1? Well, I, again, opposite. Both of them are negative, but their ratio is exactly the same. So this one also, so this would be my sine, and this will be my cosine. They are equal to each other, <coughs> and <coughs> sorry. So this angle is also good enough. So it's pi over four, and pi over four plus pi. One eighty. Now, minus one. What would be minus one? Well, minus one would be here. When lengths would be exactly the same, but in this case the cosine, which is uh, abscissa, would be negative, and um, sine, which is ordinate, would be positive. Then it would be ratio would be minus 1. They are equal in length, but since one of them is negative, the ratio of minus 1. And similar to this. So these four points represent uh, solutions in a unit circle. Now we have to express it trigonometrically with considering that the angle can be basically greater uh, than 360 degrees. So this is what, this is pi over 4 plus 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree. So it's plus pi over 2 times k, where k can be any integer number. k integer. <coughs> So that's a solution to, complete solution to this particular equation. Again, don't forget that this represents all the solutions in this format. And you can put like comma, k is any integer number, something like this. Okay, well, that's it basically, that's all six uh, problems which I wanted to solve. And again, don't forget that it's your um, attempts to solve these problems which make some benefits, actually. I mean, it's good that you're listening to me, you're watching this lecture, etc. But what's more important is to solve the problems yourself. Uh, even if you don't really come up with a real solution, try it. Even the attempt to solve the problem is beneficial for you. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.